I'm hoping that this isn't going to be too annoying for anybody. I am sitting on my giant purple ball because it is very comfy and I've got a lot of pelvic pain at the moment. Um, I'm also not knitting. Can you see these hands not knitting? I'll get on that in a little while. Okay, be still. I have notes. Do you know why I needed notes? Because I'm so angry I could burst. Let's just get on. Hello <laughs> and welcome to episode 52 of the Lonely Knitter podcast. Today is Sunday the 29th of September. Had to look at my notes. Angry I could burst. My name is Laura. If you have not been to this podcast before, this is my knit night. Welcome to the Lonely Knitter podcast. This is where I come to talk about all of the knitting every week, most weeks. Um, and it's so I don't drive my husband and my toddler crazy trying to talk to them about knitting because they don't get it. Um, I, uh, I'm sorry, this is going to be a slightly uh, frazzled podcast. So I'm coming to you from the most easterly point of England, Lowestoft in the UK. Uh, said my name was Laura. I have an Instagram. My Instagram is The Lonely Knitter. You can find me on Ravelry as The Lonely Knitter too. I have a podcast group, The Lonely Knitter podcast. <laughs> and um, yeah, where else? Um, that's where I do my giveaways most of the time. So if you want to go and join in over there, you can have a little look at what we've got coming up. I also have a Patreon if you fancy supporting the podcast. I use that money to cover postage costs for prizes. And um, there is also a Patreon giveaways. So any patrons from there are entered into other giveaways and I will try and be putting up some more content and other things for my patrons as well. You also, if you are a two or five dollar patron, those are the two highest tiers, you will be able to get all of my patterns for free. I have patterns for sale on Ravelry as The Loneliness 2 or I think it's actually under Laura Robertson which is my maiden name. I can't work out how to change it on, on uh, Ravelry. Uh, so Yes, as I said, I live here with my husband and my toddler and I am 28 weeks pregnant and I'm rubbish at pregnancy. So, um, yeah, life is hideous. I've started being sick again. Joy of joys. Um, and I'm wearing a very attractive support belt and even my sofa isn't comfy and this child is very active which is the one brilliant thing about this pregnancy because my daughter was not very active which meant that we were constantly worrying whereas this little boy has been very active from very early on and is very boisterous anyway i'm really out of sorts the shawl along is ending last day in september i can't remember how many days there are in september got baby brain uh 30 is it the first tomorrow? 29? None of them have 29, do they? Do they? Uh, but when October starts, the Shawl Along, which is in mine and Katie's Ravelry group, I have a Ravelry group which I share with Katie of the Geordie Knits podcast. Go and check her out. Um, it's called the Ravelry the Facebook group. Oh my gosh, what? The Facebook group is called Knit Along with Geordie Knits and the Lonely Knitter. Come and join us, it's a lovely community. Um, we draw prizes from a Ravelry, from Facebook and from Instagram for our quarterly knit-alongs. Last quarter's knit-along, or the one that's ending right now, was the shawl along. And this next quarter starting up is the carry along, which is any patterns by Carrie Westerman. I've chosen a pattern, I'll show you the yarn. I can't remember the pattern, it's gone. Um, but I, I'll be able to find it again, I'll tell you in future episodes. Um, I need to crack on because I've got a lot to talk about and it's already quite late because something has taken up my time. I'm angry. I will get to it at the end. So the first thing I want to do is talk about these socks. They're still not blocked because that's my life. I just can't seem to get anything done that I need to get done. These are the beautiful and wonderful Lara's Legacy Socks by 
the project bag. So that is the lovely Jenna. She has the project bag shop. She has project bag designs on Ravelry. She has the project bag podcast and she's on Instagram. Go and check her out. She is a lovely human being and she has designed this gorgeous, gorgeous pair of socks in memory of her daughter, um, Lara. It's, it's her legacy for her little girl to make a change in the world in her little girl's name. And um, all the proceeds from the, this sock pattern go to the charity Bliss. She has a target that she really wants to get to of a thousand pounds and she is motoring her way there and I really want to help. She very kindly said, would I like to give a copy away on the podcast? So I believe someone, I'm not sure who, might be her, might be, it could be anyone, is funding that copy. Um, I said, yes, that'd be lovely. And then last week I thought, you know what? It's just been payday, or it will just been payday because yesterday was, Friday was payday. It was going to be payday. Payday was coming. I would like to donate another copy as well. So there were two copies to give away. So I have closed the thread in my Ravelry group just before recording and chosen two winners. I used the random number generator and the first post that was selected was the third. And that is Rick Rack. So that is Paula on Ravelry. Um, I will get in touch. I will sort out getting you the pattern. You are getting the pattern that comes from whoever's donating it or whatever through Gemma so I will contact Gemma to get you that pattern and then I drew another one which was for me to donate and mine is going to V Shaw 7 which is Vicky from Canada and um, Vicky I'm sure you've either won things before or we've swapped before like oh, total baby brain I know I've posted you stuff um, <laughs> or you posted me stuff or I know Vicky's a long uh, standing member of podcast viewers so I was like, yay, yeah, someone I knew. <laughs> Sorry, Vicky, my brain is totally, it's really bad. It's really bad. Anyway, so those are our two lovely winners. So keep an eye out throughout this week and we will get sorted those patterns coming out to you. Um, right, I'm going to crack on straight on to finished objects. I do have a finished object this week, so it is not something I was expecting to have done. I have crocheted a corner to corner blanket for one of Ellie's dolls except she's using it as a lap blanket at the moment so here we go and get it all on camera and this was knit using one of my stash enhancement things for this week but as they're all gone I will just show you now I bought two balls of Bernat pop when I went to the yarn shop this weekend well on Friday on payday it's yarn inspirations Bernat pop it is a hundred percent acrylic so it's perfectly fine for a toddler's toy and it's, I'm guessing a chunky, I don't know, not a clue, but it comes with 140 grams in a big old cake, which is 256 metres of yarn, and I bought two, and I learnt corner to corner crochet, so I think I used the Bella Coco tutorial on um, YouTube, and it was really easy to follow, super, super easy, and um, yeah. I'm really chuffed. I just used up the two balls when I was almost finished with the so the first ball started at this end. This is where I started, and when I got to the um, it was almost done, so I started to decrease. Then I joined the new ball where this white starts. I had the tiniest little bit left over, which I'm probably not going to use for anything. So yeah, so um, this was because I bought yarn to make. Alfie, a little pram blanket, you can never have enough blankets. And Ellie went, I want a blanket. And I went, Ellie, you've got about 50 million blankets and at least two on the needles around this house. And she went, I want some new blankets. And I went, okay. <laughs> She's too, um, I uh, really, sorry, that's me tapping on the ball. I'm trying not to do that. Um, I really, really want her to, um, to not feel pushed out by her baby brother and um, yeah I just thought she's been asking actually for a little while for a blanket and a pillow for her dolls she likes to make them beds wherever she goes they have cots they have like little doll cot but she wants to make them beds everywhere um, so next will probably be a pillow at some point but she's got a blanket for now so that one's done and then we're on to whips because that is the only finished object that I have I know last week I was like Maybe I'll get this Equinox crop finished for uh, for the podcast next week. What 
where was I thinking? What, what, in what planet was I gonna get a sweater done in a week when I didn't really work on it that much? <laughs> no, that's not true. Now I have worked on it. Um, so here we go. This is the Equinox crop. This is a test knit for Truly Hooked, the lovely Verity of Truly Hooked um, Verity Castle Dean Designs. She has some lovely designs on a Ravelry and she dyes beautiful yarn. If you haven't have heard of Truly Hooked, go and look, like where have you been? <laughs> Um, so I also was chosen for yarn support for this test which was amazing for me because I was going to knit it with acrylic, there's nothing wrong with acrylic, I've already shown you an acrylic project this week but um, it was just that I didn't really have it in my budget at that point and so I said you know I'd love to be considered and she randomly picked five people to give yarn support to and um, I was one of them. So I chose DK, DK chose yarn from her um, shop and I chose this it is the pickled cabbage colorway and I have been having a go at helical knitting which I have never done before and it is super easy and I used the Babbles Travelling Yarns podcast um, tutorial and it's still on the needle which is too, too small so it's uh, bunching up so it won't do that normally um, and I love it so much and here is the progress keeper to show you where I was last week so I have worked on it and obviously I am a big girl I am doing the 51 inch bust size so you know it does take some time so the progress keeper down is how much more I can get for the body and then I am now on the bottom ribbing and I am not that far from being done it's just there is a lot of stitches on the needles so um I, uh, I will definitely have, I would love to have this finished by next Sunday, so I need to knit the last little bit of this and cast off and then I need to do two full length sleeves. We will see, we will see, but it would be very nice. So that is in Truly Hooked yarn and it is a Truly Hooked test and that is living in my Grenade Creations, having a go Kirsty, bag that I got from Perth Festival of Yarn, my gorgeous pink tartan bag which I absolutely love and it is a fabulous fabulous size so that's living in there my next whip is a design secret project that I can't show you but I just wanted you to know that I have been working on more than what I'm just showing you because it doesn't feel like very much <laughs> and the other thing that I can show you that I had worked on this week but not that much again because sweater design secret project and um crazy toddler who is having a potty training aggression issue. <laughs> um, we're getting there again, we're getting there again. Anyway, so this yarn is a gorgeous, gorgeous skein of self-striping from Noodle Soup Yarns, the wonderful Charlie at Noodle Soup Yarns. This is how I balled it up, it was in the skein. I thought I would love a gorgeous god stop of all in this. And Noodle Soup Yarns, um, I've got a lot of Charlie's yarn now in my stash and she is very very talented this is I think one of her old full buns she's got new ones now but go and check her out noodlesoupshop.co.uk or check her out on Instagram um but her yarn is beautiful I was going to put in a contrasting heel and then I didn't have it while I was out and I thought just go with it and I was thinking about cutting the yarn to make a fresh stripe start but I just love how it naturally went so that's where we are. I have finished the gusset decreases and I, that's where the gusset, gusset decreases ended. So just there and now I have got to do 50 rows down, 50 rounds down the foot before I can start my toe. And I'm marking the end of the gusset decreases with a little Bush Baby Makes um, stitch marker, which was the one that came in the kit with the Grenade Creations um, bag at Perth. Those are living in my gorgeous Jibby Russo's Bathing Beauties drawstring bag. I have two of these bags from Jibby Russo's. One is a drawstring, one is a zip bag. And I do know for a fact that today or yesterday, might have been yesterday, this weekend, they did a big shop update. And one of the things that went into their shop was a bunch of these material bags. Now, um, Jibby Russo's are incredibly, incredibly affordable bags. And, um, if you want a Bathing Beauties bag, I can't guarantee you there's going to be any left because I haven't checked, 
but I would go and check out Jibby Russo's on Etsy and on Instagram and have a little look at what they have. They have a enormous selection and for brilliant prices, so go and check them out. Um, and I actually asked for this fabric before they had it in their shop. I messaged them and said, is there any way you can get this? And they did, they got it in. So if you see a, fab a fabric that you absolutely love, um, but no one's got it in a bag that you can buy, um, try messaging them because it cost me just over £17 for this bag and a Ziploc bag, uh, uh, a zip bag and delivery. So they are absolute bargains. Okay, last project in the whips is in my busy, busy pottering bag. So if you've been watching for a little while, you might know what's in here. So in this busy pottering bag, which is incredibly well made and has a lovely large pocket inside, lives my cozy memories blanket. Now, I can't believe I'm actually showing you this because it just shows how bad my brain is right now. But here is the blanket so far. I don't believe I've shown you this one. This is, um, I want to say glass slipper from... Uh, Amy Florence, Stranded Dye Works. It is Stranded Dye Works, definitely, and it's the yarn that I used to knit my um, Geordie Knits socks. It's a sock pattern. Okay, my brain's gone. I tested a sock pattern. Uh, yeah, uh, I knit a pair of Geordie Knits, Geordie Knits pattern socks with this. Um, I think it's called Glass Slipper, but I can't remember. And then this is the first of a lovely little set of minis that I showed a few weeks ago that my lovely friend Katie, my lovely new friend Katie, she's Sharon of SCR1 TNO podcast friend Katie, and uh, I've acquired her. She's my friend now. <laughs> um, she gave me a little set of minis, and this one I've added to my blanket. I then started to add another one to my blanket. I have baby brain. We were watching League of Thrones, this wasn't very long ago, this was like tonight, earlier tonight after I had gone to bed. I have had a very long day, I am very tired, I'm not sleeping very well. But I I knew that it was, I was starting a new row. I knew that I had to pick up stitches here and cast on here. And then I sat down and did it. And I picked up stitches here and here. And started, and I'm a long way through, like it took a long time for me to realise what I had done wrong so I'm basically knitting a very odd yeah look what I've done <laughs> so I need to rip that out so I will rip that out and start again you know I always have such good um intentions with things like blankets like this and then they'll fall off the um track always fall off the track so that's um, Katie's minis in the busy pottering bag of my lips. I'm using the Coziest Memories pattern by Kemper Ray. And um, I just want to show you one more bag this week. Technically it hasn't got a project in it right now, but it has had all of my projects in throughout the week because I have been using this gorgeous So Can Jo bag as a handbag. <laughs> it's so big, it's got loads of gubbins, like tons of gubbins in here right now. like. A very squashed box of French fancies and a printer ink cartridge in my purse and everything. Um, so I've been using this as a handbag all week, so it's had all of my projects in it at one point or another. But remember, so can Jo. Watch that space, go and find her on Instagram. She has an Etsy shop, she just hasn't like launched it yet. So it is there, she just hasn't filled it with stuff for us to buy. But Jo makes the most amazing bags ever. And we're all waiting. We're waiting, Joe. We're waiting. <laughs> um, okay. Next on. Stash enhancement. We are racing through. I will tell you why at the end. Stash enhancement. So, um, Friday came. It was payday. I don't earn very much because I only work part-time around my daughter and the childcare that we have. So my lovely mother-in-law looks after my daughter a couple of days a week and I work those two days and then I work on the weekends. Um, but I don't earn a vast amount of money. And so I sp try and spend my yarn money wisely. Um, you'd think I would try and divide it up throughout the month and spend a bit each week or, you know, just drag it out a little. Nah, -uh. uh, every payday I go, yarn! And just go and get everything I can get and then um, feel skint for the next three weeks and uh, six days. <laughs> um, this month is no exception. So the first thing that I did um, on Friday morning was put in a couple of online orders and then I took my little girl, had had a bad night's sleep and woke up early and gone to bed, well not gone to sleep until late the night before. 
so she doesn't nap at the moment unless you put her in the car and so I decided we'd go on a little drive so we drove to the Lost Sheep Wool Shop which is about a 30 minute drive from me um, and it's in uh, Rollsby in Norfolk and I spent some money so the first thing I bought for this on Friday was two of the balls as the nap pop that's the first thing I'm going to show you anyway it's probably not the first thing I picked up but um, they're already gone and used so I haven't got them to show you um, next I these aren't in any order I can't remember what order I picked them up in Karen Simply Soft now I have um, I love hand dyed yarn I have tons of hand dyed yarn I am stashing up big time for maternity leave but I also love acrylic and I have tons of acrylic and I have tons of in the middle a bit of acrylic and a bit of natural fibres you know equal opportunities um oh the heartburn is real it's acid reflux acid reflux okay. apologies um anyway uh i've had I've heard lots of stuff about karen as a company um in their yarn and its affordability and what you can get and i've never actually used any in fact the only time i ever had yarn that's been bought like this before was when we went to america a couple of years ago i was in Walmart. Target didn't have any yarn. We didn't really go major. We were in Florida and we didn't have a car of our own. So we only had a big family vehicle that all the family could go in. And we went with all my husband's family and we couldn't drive it. So we only went to like Walmart and Target. Target had no yarn, the one we went to anyway. Um, but the Walmart we did had a load of red heart acrylic. And I was like, that's the best I can get. I'm getting it. I'm getting yarn. <laughs> so I, um, I had a red heart that was in these sort of weird sausage cakes before. But um, yeah, I've never had Karen Simply Soft or any kind of Karen yarn before. And um, I know uh, some of my friends really rate Karen cakes. And I just thought, well, I'm gonna try. So I got these two to make a corner to corner crochet, like pram sized blanket for Alfie, for my baby. Um, so these two. And uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna pull from the center because I feel like I feel like I will pull from the centre because they are obviously designed to be pulled from the centre but are they just going to fall apart? I don't know, anyone used these before and they just go really really bad and bleh, concertina out? Um, so they are 170 grams each and I think they are a worsted weight yarn. That's what they said in the shop. Oh the heartburn is real. <coughs> but it's 100% acrylic so I'm going to wash her. And um, it was £5.40 for... Pebble. Oh my gosh. Hey, there's a free pattern on the label for a corner to corner, uh, not a corner to corner, a zigzag crew, that, that blanket. There is a free pattern on the label. I'm not doing that, I'm doing a corner to corner crochet blanket because it was so fun and I'm going to stripe. Um, anyway, details 170 grams in one sausage and that's 288 metres. So, little stripy blanket for my little boy. And then, what should I go with next? This one, Noodle Soup Yarns. So, um, in Lush Sheep Wool Shop, they stock Noodle Soup Yarns. And I love Noodle Soup Yarns. And as I have the honeyed all balled up, I have a skein less of Noodle Soup Yarns. And I was looking and I was thinking, you don't really need it, Laura. You don't really need it, Laura. And I go see Charlie's sometimes. She does some of the markets in Norwich, um, the like Norwich Creative Market things. And so I was like, I can wait until then. And but then this one was right at the back of the cubby and it is Alien Berry Self Striping. Um, sturdy Sock, 100 grams, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And here it is, Alien Berry. And it's self striping. And I was like, I need another one because I now don't have a self striping of hers because I've used that one, so now I need one. So I got it. So one for me. <laughs> and then, um, as I was going out, I don't think I have any wet Yorkshire spinners stripy left in my stash and I just really fancied this. So these will more than likely be for me, though I am considering them for socks for my granddad. Though I need to find out what size feet my granddad does because I have given him socks before that were the same size as my dad, I think, and I don't know if he ever wore them. I, I, I was young and stupid and was like, Johnny socks! <laughs> so this one, um, I don't know what colourway this is. Is it one of their cocktail ones? I don't know. They don't put it on the ball band, do they? 
so my short short spinners signature four pair so i got that one and then last thing that i got which is actually what i went there for i am doing the um carry along knit along with katie of georgia knits that's our next quarterly knit along and this time i'm actually going to try and properly knit along with the group obviously i'm not eligible for prizes um but this is what i have chosen for my um for my project so when i actually looked at the yardages on that's what's been used on the pattern that i wanted this should be enough because i am going also down needle size um it's a sport weight project and i'm going down to four ply but when i looked at the yardages i should be okay but if i'm not okay it's not going to be that hard for me to get more now this is going to be the main body of the shawl this gray again i don't know what it is but it's just this gray and then i really wanted either a dark purple or a hot pink for the border but they didn't have either of those and i thought well i'm just going to get this one and then if i happen to find the perfect one online i will definitely still use this for heels toes and cuffs or other little things in the future so all West Yorkshire Spinners signature four ply, these are the three stones I have, but I am on the lookout for a rich purple, burgundy or hot pink to go with these greys for the border. I was also thinking of like a nice green, but they didn't quite have the deep colour that I wanted, so those are the three that I got. So those things were all, I was at the till, I paid for them, I was done, I was like, whew, Laura, you're spending all the monies got my bag i was ready to walk out and then i saw this bag hanging <sighs> and i i just i don't know i was like can you tell me how much that is and it wasn't very expensive and it's this one and it's got one of the holes in the top and it's one of these bags and i just it's got a little tab there but it's the pattern like this vintagey sort of pattern and I loved it I was like I don't know what it is about this fabric but also the very first knitting bag that I ever had my nanny I think gave it to me for Christmas one year and it was exactly this shape and size it was bright red and it had a cat with a ball of yarn on the front and I don't know what happened to it and it had the hole in the top and I don't know what happened to it no idea but um I would love it if I still had that, if my mum still had it somewhere, I don't think she does though. Anyway, so it's just a very basic bag, there is nothing more to it, it's just lined in this brown fabric. Um, yeah, I just loved it, it had to come home with me. Um, I probably won't use it like it's meant to be used and put the arm through the hole, because I'll just keep it all in there. Maybe it'll be a sock bag, I might put a carabiner on here and like hang it off another bag. I just loved it. So that one came home with me too. So that's everything I got from the Lost Sheep Tool Shop in Rollsby. And one of my deliveries, one of the things I ordered on Friday morning, turned up super, super quickly. So I'll get the things out so there's minimal rustling. And then I will show you the goodies. So I put an order in with someone who I have met. I met her at Unravel, um, but I didn't know who she was at the time. Um, she is my good friend Sharon's friend. So her name is Jenny and she runs Woolly Goodness Yarns. So here we go. Is it gonna focus? I do not know. So that is www.woollygoodnessyarns.com and she's on Etsy as Woolly Goodness as well. And I had wanted to buy some of her yarn from it for a little while I really liked what I saw on her site um but every time I looked I seemed to be skint and then she put up a post with some gorgeous progress keepers and stitch markers and I was like oh my gosh and um, they stuck in my head so much that when payday came around I was like I know where I'm going so one of the things that I wanted to do with my patreon patreon money is um and I don't get tons after um I know I think it was about like 55, 56 dollars is my current patron level, like amount of people who are subscribed, which is amazing. And on the first of every month, um, Patreon take their fees and then I can withdraw the money and obviously I lose some in conversion and PayPal. So 
last month it worked out about 30 quid. Now I've got a lot of, um, there's three po packages that I'll be posting out from this shawl along and um, I didn't have any prizes left after that, that's it, that's, those are all my prizes that people have sent me very nicely, lovely companies have sent me yarn and bags to give away, uh, which I'm incredibly grateful for. But another part of, um, and, and you know, if anyone ever does want to support the podcast in that way, I am so, so grateful. But I don't, I wanted to set up Patreon, Patreon so that I could afford to pay the postage and potentially add in a few more giveaway prizes for Patreon, Patreon supporters as well. So I knew I wanted to get something for my first Patreon giveaway, which will be early in October. Um, and anyone who subscribed, so I think I've had one payout from Patreon, which was the people who paid on the 1st of September. So I will go through those and everyone from there will get an entry. And then I will go through all of the October ones and everyone who paid in October will get an entry. So that some people will get two entries, some people will get one, depending on how long you have been financially supporting the podcast. They'll all go in the hat and I'll pull out one. Uh, the same will happen again in January. So everyone who paid in November, December and January, in early January, I will go, right, if you paid November, December and January, that's three entries into the giveaway. If you paid um, just December and January, because you joined there, you get two entries into the giveaway. So that's how it will work. So I knew I wanted to get something for my Patreon supporters and I also wanted to get something for me. <laughs> so um, what originally drew me in were the amazing stitch markers and she showed them on her Instagram and I was just obsessed. So I've got three and I basically picked three that I knew I would love with the agreement to myself that when they came one of them would go to a Patreon giveaway. So, the first one I picked was this goldfish bulb. So it is, I've chosen it as a stitch marker rather than a progress keeper. And it is a little bulb, light bulb, with a, that is a goldfish tank. And it has a little gem up there and it's so sweet. And I absolutely love it. I love it, I love it. The next one I love just as much. And it is, again, a stitch marker. And it is a little black cat in a very decorative cup of tea, <laughs> which is so cute and I absolutely love it. And then the last one I chose as a progress keeper and it's a little cactus in a very cute little pot. Now, this one I'm going to have to keep because we have got a little bit obsessed with cacti and plants in our house recently, um, including my husband. And um, I just love this one. I, I need to keep this one. So it was between these two, which one could I bear to part with? And actually, I'm still not sure. I think this one has to stay with me because I just love the cat so much. Um, which means that this one is gonna go in the giveaway. That is hard for me, man, that is hard. I'm almost considering buying another one so that I don't have to um, give them away. But these are only £1.70 and you get to choose between Progress Keeper and Stitch Marker on her shop. And there are tons more. I could have picked up tons more. If I'd have had unlimited money, I would have bought more. <laughs> Um, I also bought two skeins of yarn and I bought two that I absolutely loved knowing that one of them would be coming out to, as a Patreon giveaway. Um, so I picked two that I absolutely loved and now I have chosen which one I want. So the one that I am going to keep is the pumpkin colourway which is a silver sparkle four ply, 70% merino, 25% nylon, 5% stellina, 420 metres to 100 grams and I think we can all agree that this is pumpkin. Look that there's the sparkle. So this one is mine, a little bit of Halloween. And the other one I chose, because it is coming up for Halloween, is, oh no, it doesn't say the colourway on here. I, think, I thought it was something like Witch's Brew, but I think it was last year's Halloween. I'm not 100%, it's a Halloween colourway. I'll look it up. Um, and it's purple, orange and green and very this time of year. So this one, along with this stitch marker, can I tuck that in there, will be going in the giveaway for my amazing, amazing patrons. All patrons are eligible for this giveaway. I will be doing a quarterly giveaway for all patrons and I will also do a six monthly giveaway for 
two and five no for the five dollar um, patrons it's on my patreon um account but if you're a five dollar patron you also get a six monthly giveaway entry baby brain just check it out on there if you're interested um she also put in a lovely organic pomegranate naturally caffeine free tea so that will go in with the skein of yarn and the stitch marker because i don't drink that many teas i am trying to find teas i like i know i have one of these in my stash of ones that have been given to me and this i will not put in <laughs> but it also came with a lavender sachet anyone who's been watching the podcast knows that during this pregnancy i have been obsessed with lavender i don't know what has happened to me i love lavender now <laughs> so good so good i liked it before but this is just ridiculous i have a lavender sachet in every single bag i'm putting them they're next to my bed they're literally everywhere i still need more <laughs> um but i you know i've got one in my handbag i've got one in my work bag i've literally been taking them absolutely everywhere and i just especially when i feel nauseous i'm just like and now start being sick again i'm like all the time <laughs> so these ones will be going into my first patreon giveaway and i might have some more to go with that so i'm just waiting to see what i can part with i might might give away one of my project bags that i have in my stash that isn't getting a lot of love um just because i have a lot of project bags not because they're not all amazing so those were my goodies from woolly goodness yarns that i am really 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 happy with so um go and check woolly goodness yarns out and if you sign up to her newsletter in the first one you get a discount code i think it was 15 percent off so um very worthwhile if you also fancy doing that i have put in some other orders i am um, that was not a fart that was a ball if you heard that <laughs> um if it was a fart i'd have just cut out <laughs> Um, so uh, I've put in an order with the Hairy Sheep, so that is gorgeous Emma and Rosie who have the Hairy Sheep podcast. They also have an Etsy shop, the heartburn is real bad. They also have an Etsy shop where they put their hand dyed yarn and hand dyed fibre and there's a lot more fibre in there than yarn at the moment and it's beautiful so I bought myself a braid of that, it is incredibly well priced and um they're just lovely so if you fancy going and checking out their podcast or their shop or both better both um then do so please they are brilliant i was feeling the yarn dale um yarn party missing out thing you know when all the people you know are at the yarn party and you're not you're at work on a saturday <laughs> so i thought i'd treat myself so there was that and then i've also ordered from felt fusion I ordered a couple of skeins that I've been looking at for a while on Etsy and I also have an idea for what I would like my husband to get me for my our first anniversary part um my first anniversary present I've already bought his present he's got his present already even though it's like two months too early but I have also picked something out so he's going to um sort that for me but I'll show you when it turns up okay so that's everything so I'm just going to quickly go through some of the podcasts that I've watched this week so I have watched um, not only last week's podcast, but also, well, the last podcast she did because I was a bit behind, but also her two vlogs that are up so far, the SCR1TNO podcast, that is my friend Sharon. I have watched Katie of Georgia Knits, always watch Katie. Uh, her podcasts come out usually on a Monday. Um, I have watched the Hairy Sheep podcast, that is my lovely friends, Emma and her daughter Rosie. They are a fabulous um, knitting duo, very talented. Um, and I have watched Amy Florence, Stranded Dye Works. I have watched I know I've watched others pardon me, Baby Brain, Baby Brain but I also love to find a new podcast um, someone I like the look of and start from the very beginning I've done it with a lot of people, I've done it with Mina, the Knitting Expat loads of people, I've People like George Nitz, SCR1, you know, and the Hairy Sheep, I have actually been watching from the very beginning pretty much anyway, so I didn't really have that big catch up to do. But when I did it with Mina's podcast with the Knitting Expat, there was a lot to watch. Um, and I loved every minute of it. I felt like I went through this whole story with her. It was very much like watching a whole TV series, like 
series after series coming up today. So I'm now doing that now with the Honey Bee Knits podcast. Um, I think I'm about episode 16 of 50 odd. So that I'm really enjoying. Um, I went and saw the Downton Abbey movie this week on Friday alone. Best Laurie knit more than half, no, about half of the, it was about half of the Cornish Corner Crochet blanket. I didn't knit it, I crocheted it, what am I about? Um, I wanted to see if I could crochet in the dark. I took my plain vanilla socks thinking, oh, we'll just do those. And then I was sat there while the adverts were on and the lights were still on doing the Cornish Corner Crochet. And then I sort of thought, I can do this. It's just trebles and a few chain stitches. And so, and when the lights went down, I could just do it by feel. So that was lovely. I'm, I'm trying to build up muscle memory. I'm never going to be that talented crocheter. It just won't go in my brain. But um, when it's that simple, it was lovely. Um, and going to cinema on my own is like one of those pleasures that I absolutely love. Um, I haven't done it for absolutely ages, but it was actually on my list. I've been going through some CBT, uh, some cognitive behaviour therapy with a, a therapist um, and this week it was, well actually it's for the last two months it's been a challenge that she sent me, sent me saying you know we need to get back into things that you used to enjoy, you need to do things for fun again and um, and we've been diary sorting and everything to try and get me all on track and one of the things that she said um, maybe I could get try this week was actually going out into a social, social situation on my own uh, and seeing if I could get over my anxiety that I was getting and um, it was really nice you know the film's been out a few couple of weeks now and um, there were about 15 people in the cinema it's not a big cinema it's a little independent cinema but it was one of the bigger screens uh, I sat in they all sat in very back rows I sat about halfway down the cinema no one sat in front of me it was lovely and all of the 15 people there were like I'd say over 50 so they were all adults so there was no kids, no teenagers, no no bad behaviour, like everyone was, not that adults can't be badly behaved, but like, they were all there because they watched Downton Abbey and they wanted to watch the Downton Abbey movie. They clapped at the end, like, they were Downton Abbey fans. <laughs> so uh, I had the best time, the best time watching that. Okay, so this week other than that, I've worked. Ellie went to the allergy clinic on Tuesday, we had a big allergy clinic appointment and we are only there an hour and a half, even though they said to uh, allow three hours, which was quite nice. Turns out my daughter has a severe peanut allergy, which is a shame. We're now um, going through some paperwork to get her onto a study to try and um, to try and reduce her sensitivity to peanuts rather than um, take the peanut allergy away. Nothing's going to take it away, it's severe. But um, it was very unlikely that it will go away, but this could hopefully really reduce the um, symptoms of a reaction. Um, I want to talk a bit about, um, I know last week I think it was, I said community news. And I was like, I've definitely got that from Katie's project, uh, Katie's uh, podcast. Yeah, stuff that's been going on. I have failed completely in a couple of Instagram challenges. So the first one was the Hairy Sheep Socktember challenge if you have done it and managed to get all the way through well done and um, I'm sure it'll be amazing I'm sure the prizes will be amazing everything those girls do is amazing the challenge was an amazing challenge I'm so annoyed with myself I always fail at Instagram challenges so I don't know why I'm annoyed with myself because I should have known that this would happen but they are such good friends of mine that this one's I think hit me a lot harder that I failed <laughs> um, I started off okay, I think I was a bit late with something, but I was like, no, come on, you can do it, and I was doing it, um, but I think it was around when my, my, my family's dog died, so it's a dog that lives with my parents, um, but she was my dog, yeah, since we were, I was like 16, 17, uh, 17 I think it was, and, um, and you know, I lived at home with her for a good few years, and you know, I, I saw her as my dog, even though I don't live with her anymore, and I'm all, I moved out, um, but I was there when, when she had to be put down, she had very a very nasty tumour that couldn't be operated on and she was a very old little rescue dog so we didn't really know how old she was but she'd been with my family for like 12 years and um, they thought she was 2-3 when she came to them and she was staffy, uh, she'd been abused before she came to my family so she, she'd been through a lot and um, when that happened I lost a bit of enthusiasm for anything this is what happens when I go through my like little depression stages. Uh, I say depression stages. When I get depressed, 
especially when I'm not on my antidepressants uh, or I get high anxiety, I just drop everything and stop functioning. That's earlier in the year when I was pregnant and I was really struggling just before I went back on my antidepressants. I stopped knitting even and my mental health was awful. Um, when she died, it sort of put a bit of a stop on loads of things for me, like my enjoyment of things. And I just seemed to get, I felt like every day I was getting to like half ten at night, about to go to bed. And then thinking, oh I didn't post in the Instagram challenge today, I'll do it tomorrow. And then the same thing would happen the next day. So I was really annoyed at myself that I've um, flaked out on that one because it would have been really fun. And I wanted to support my friend's brilliant idea. And I love knitting socks, so it's not like I haven't got socks on the needles all the time and socks around the house. Now actually, um, quite a lot of the things like the colours and stuff that they've been asking for as prompts, I did realise that I actually don't have those, so maybe I need more socks. <laughs> and the same with the project bag, monogamy challenge, failed on that one. I mean, I failed on being monogamous, I failed after like a week, two weeks, but, mm, ten days, but I could have still kept up with prompts and stuff, but no, I lost all the enthusiasm for both of them. I don't know what's going on with me. In other news, my dad has now uh, adopted a new dog. He's had his dog since Tuesday, so it's now Sunday. Um, he went and got another rescue staffy. There's always loads of staffies in the rescue centre. Quite a lot of them have horrible history. <sighs> I went and met her. We had a lovely little walk. My grandparents met her. All the family met her before we brought her home. Made sure she'd had all the correct jabs and everything. She's already spayed, thankfully. Um, so we didn't have to put her through that. And uh, she is now home and living with him. She's a six year old staffy, so she's a lot older than any dog that he would normally get. He normally would get a pup and train it, but he would always rescue. Um, but he would train it right from early. She's come from a family, so she's known kids, um, but she was in the RSPCA system for a, a very long time before going into um, this little shelter that's near us. And um, they really wanted her. She is the most gentle thing so far, anyway. Um, you know, Staffies are incredibly, usually incredibly, I mean all dogs, but you know, this dog as well, seems incredibly easy to train. She's picking things up already, she's already house trained, she can already sit, she can already walk nicely on the lead. Um, as far as we know, she was with another dog that was a bit vicious. This other dog was also at the shelter. They weren't put together at all in the shelter and they've been apart in the system for a while. So my dad couldn't take them both and he didn't really want a dog that was known to be a vicious dog around or known to have a vicious history around um, his family and obviously my children. Um, I would never leave a dog alone with my children anyway, not one that we don't know and haven't had in our family for that long. I probably would have left Mabel, the old one, alone with my kid while I've walked her out the room or whatever. That's because she was the most ancient, old, laid back we all climbed all over a sort of dog. Um, but even then, you can't ever trust an animal, not really, you don't know what they're thinking, they're not a person. But, um, not 100%, you can't ever. But um, she seems an absolutely lovely dog and it is really nice, I think, that he has been able to give her a home. So, uh, anyway, totally off topic. Um, let me talk about the thing that I'm very angry about. Talking about my knitting has definitely calmed me down a little. So I'm at least able to form sentences. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you by now have seen the article that came out this week with information about the sock mortician incident and carry on. Um, let's have this made very, very clear. This is a grown man who put a post out onto Instagram claiming responsibility for a hashtag and telling people trying to tell people, maybe in a very gentle way, but whatever, or a very backhanded way, a very sly way, but whatever, how to behave. We all saw it. Um, so that, that, first of all, is a man coming into this space and saying, hey, I started this, so everyone has to, I want people to behave the way I would like them to behave. No one has the right to tell people that they can't be angry about something. You know, if they're being treated badly because they're from a marginalised group and they are being treated, you know, if you're being treated, if you're receiving racist behaviour, if you're receiving any kind of horrendous behaviour, no one has the right to tell you you can't be angry about it. 
Um, so I would never presume to tell a person of colour that they cannot be angry that someone treats them differently because of, of their skin colour, because of their history. I would never ever tell someone that they can't be angry that they are getting homophobic treatment. I would never tell someone that they have to be gentle when they are receiving awful treatment because they're not cisgender. Like, no, like, no one has the right to say, this is how you should feel. Everyone gets to feel how they want to feel. So this man came in and tried to tell people how to feel. And in his original post, he put that he was a big boy and could handle anything that was coming. He knew this was controversial and he could handle anything that was coming. He then edited his, edited his post later because he got backlash from this very, I'm walking in here, this is my, this is my scenario, this is my world and I'm taking charge. Because he got backlash from that, he then suddenly went, I'm not a big boy. And he tried to walk on and just post other things, but people were angry because he'd upset them. And rather than saying, whoa, I did not realise how bad this would go, I've done the wrong thing, I apologise, I am so sorry for hurting people, because I'm sorry, him turning around saying I'm a big boy, I can handle any of this, but then not, but then, and then having a full on mental breakdown about the things that happened after, and then coming back and saying, like his husband saying he's in hospital, everyone has to be lovely and nice to him, why should they be? He hasn't been caring about other people's feelings. He didn't care what they thought. He was just like, be gentle to, you know, don't argue, be gentle. No, no. Not only do you not get to tell people how to feel, but you also don't get to upset people and then not acknowledge that other people have feelings. And you don't get to come back and say, this has given me a full on mental, mental breakdown. Everyone needs to send love and everyone needs to care about my mental health and my feelings. When what you have done has torn apart the mental health and feelings of thousands of other people and it was thousands of people who commented and it was thousands of people who were upset. I'm so fed up of these people saying that the um, majority is silent and the minority is loud and therefore actually the silent minority is standing behind the sophmetician and all of this issue because that is not the case. Everyone I speak to whether or not they want him, like, no one I have spoken to wishes him ill. No one I have spoken to wants him to be ill. No one I have spoken to him, you know, wants that. All they say is, I want him to fix it. I want him to not just stand there and say, my feelings matter, but none of the other people in this conversation do. Or just the people that I care about. Just the white people, by the sounds of it. He hasn't said that, so that was me. So the reason I'm angry is because this article came out that basically documented the situation, the whole incident, the um, the post that he originally put up on Instagram and then follow on with the incident that happened um, at the arm show that he went to because even though he was in hospital less than a few days later he was then back and working um, even though he said he was suicidal or on mental breakdown, he was back working within, what, two days? I think it was Wednesday he was in hospital, Friday he did a lecture or a class or something. Um, so someone spoke to him in our community on the weekend uh, uh, following all of this, just to sort of try and understand what was going on. Um, I'm not saying that the person that spoke to him was all sweetness and light and quiet and I am very sure that the woman that spoke to him stood her ground like an adult and because I have heard from her what her what she said I've also heard from multiple eyewitnesses what was said and how it was um, this story in this article written by someone who was not there and who by the looks of it has only interviewed one person that was there and that is Stop Petition um, she painted it completely differently she painted the entire scenario completely differently it was a completely one-sided from Socrates' point of view article, uh, it was completely disregarding of every single person's feelings that was in this scenario other than Socrates. And it just wiped it all under the carpet and basically said that 
the community has turned horrible. No, the community has had a bit of an eye opener, and that eye opener isn't isn't hasn't happened to everyone by the scene, by the looks of it. But this community has had an eye opener to what was going on, and hopefully we are going through an epic amount of change that will make it a better place to be for the future. If everybody could turn around and say, my feelings matter, but so do everyone else's, everyone is just as important, and this needs to be a level playing field, an equal place to be, then <laughs> it wouldn't... <laughs> It wouldn't be an issue, but there are people who turn around and go, no, no, you're being grumpy, you're being loud, you're being angry, and I won't, I won't engage because you're being angry. No, I don't care about your feelings. Maybe not in so many words, but that is basically what you're saying when you disregard people. And a lot of people in our community are trying to work to learn a lot of, you know, how, how other people feel and appreciate how other people feel. And a lot of people in our community aren't interested. Socrates isn't interested. I'm sorry. He might have come from a very nice place in the beginning. He might have started the diversity hashtag. I stood up for this man when um, everything came out with Woolness. And I was the person that originally asked on a public forum, on Instagram, on a comment about the fact that every single tutor and vendor was white at their international, you know, massive wellness, wellness festival. I was the person that said it looks like whiteness and I am not ashamed of that because I've questioned and I gave a chance to respond and then in my Instagram stories I gave a full, I showed exactly what the responses were, I didn't sit there and say nah they just didn't want to do anything, I said they're trying, they have said that they're going to try, they have said that they're going to see how we go forward from here, they've put a statement up, you know I never tried to start a witch hunt or make anything horrible. And I didn't start it all off anyway. There was a lot of people already thinking the same thing and asking questions. Um, I, I was not the loudest voice in that conversation. I'm not that loud a voice really when it comes to things anyway. And I was going through a bit of a hard time with that early start to my pregnancy. So I probably wasn't the strongest um, voice going on. And then after a little while I just went, I need to step back and need to step out. I am not an angry voice most of the time. I'm just someone who goes, whoa, can we care a little more? <sighs> so when I saw that article, I was fuming. I was absolutely fuming because it is, I have a journalism degree. My BA is in, um, well, my degree is creative and media writing with journalism. I would never, ever think it was acceptable to write an article that is completely one-sided you know, that, that people are getting so defensive of call out culture I think it's all a load of rubbish I think if you see something that could cause harm you should turn around and go hey do you think that could cause harm so that those people have the chance to fix it I've said it before and I will say it again if I say something that hurts or upset you please upset you please speak to me so that I can try and fix it I have had people message me and say this thing you did or this thing you said it hurt my feelings or that doesn't seem right or that's not fair or you've got the wrong end of the stick and instead of getting defensive I have tried my hardest to understand but it takes a lot for someone to come out and say that, unless they are being intentionally mean, and I know you do get trolls on the internet, but so far I haven't had that. It takes a lot for someone to stand up and go, this hurt me. And other people's feelings are just as important as my own. So what right have I to say, I don't care. Mm. If I want anyone to care about my food, treat people, treat people as you wish to be treated. Treat them as you wish to be treated. Now I would wish for anyone to say to me, you hurt me can we can you try and make amends here so that I can fix it and that is a for me I think that is a privilege a good amount of a, a, a huge amount of emotional labor for that person to do try and make me less of a dick why can't other people think like that why do they all have to be you're attacking me I don't like this and just raging in at them I don't know I'm I'm fuming fuming I'm absolutely fuming but 
You're not gonna change people, are you? You're not gonna change this man. There's no way. Just put this video out. The truth. The truth according to you, my friend. The truth according to you. I'm gonna go, because we're well over an hour, and um, I want to watch the rest of this video before I go to bed, even though then I probably won't sleep because I'll be too angry. So fed up. So fed up. And I haven't felt like this for a long time. I haven't felt like this for a very long time. But I can't, I can't, I couldn't knit. I was watching it, I was holding it, and I literally just put my knitting down and I was just sat there like this. Like you are you are weaponizing your this state. You are you are there with the tears in your eyes, you know, you put your every all this type at the beginning, like Stop it, man. Stop it. Just try and fix the situation. Just try and make amends for the harm you have caused. And stop saying you haven't caused any harm because you have, because there are people out there hurt. So, whether or not you intended it, intent means nothing. Intent means nothing. You could have intended all the lovely things all the time, but if someone got hurt, try and fix it with them. End of. Stop being so stubborn. I don't know why I'm saying this because no way sort of condition is ever gonna ever watch this. Not that I care anyway. This is my little space on the internet where I get stuff out. If anyone tells me to stick to my knitting after this, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to walk away. There's something going on in the knitting community. And I will be talking about things that go in, on in the knitting community. And this is my, this is my safe place where I come to talk about it. If in future, if you've got this far and you really don't want to hear about this sort of thing, in future, the best place is probably to end after stash enhancement and uh, then you won't hear anything other than the knitting. <laughs> anyway, it's definitely been a rant this week. I better go because otherwise this is going to get really long and it will take me forever to edit and then forever and a day to put on YouTube. I'm going to watch the rest of that video. I'm going to try and chill out and then I'm going to go to bed. I hope you all have a fabulous week and thank you as always for making me so, so much less of a lone knitter. <laughs>